Amy is an astronaut. She had spent months preparing for a space journey that would take her outside of the solar system. During the trip, she landed on another planet in an unknown galaxy. She began to explore the city and its citizens. Very soon, though, she felt the need to go to the restroom. She saw two doors leading to the ladies' and gentlemen's bathrooms and got confused. She didn't speak the local language and couldn't ask which door was for men and which was for women. Thankfully, she met a local guide, Bo, who could understand English. However, he could only speak his native language. What two questions should Amy ask to figure out the right door? She should point at one of the doors and ask, is this the woman's restroom? Then she needs to remember Bo's reply and ask, am I a woman? If Bo says the same word, the restroom Amy is pointing at must be for women. And if Bo says a different word, the restroom is for men. A thief wanted to rob a local bank. He came up with a brilliant plan to dress up as one of the bank's clients and try to sneak into the vault. As he was approaching the vault, he saw a security guard standing right in front of the door. The robber hadn't anticipated this, so he hid and watched the guard carefully. When one of the actual bank clients walked up to the door, the security guard said, 12, and the client said, 6, and got inside. Then another client came up to the vault. When the security guard said 6, the person answered 3 and was granted access. Oh, I've totally got this, the robber thought. He nonchalantly walked up to the security guard. When the guard said 10, the robber confidently answered 5. He was arrested immediately. Why was his answer wrong, and what should he have answered instead? The correct response depends on the number of the letters in the word. 12 has 6 letters, so the answer is 6. 6 has 3 letters, so the answer is 3. As for 10, the robber should have said 3. Dave was on his way to a football match when he got a flat tire. He stopped on the roadside to fix it, but accidentally dropped all four wheel nuts into the sewer grate. There was no way to retrieve them. Dave was beginning to suspect that he would have to spend hours there when a car passing by stopped to help him. Dave told the driver about his problem, and the guy knew immediately what Dave needed to do. Dave managed to change the tire very quickly and went to the nearest service station to get his car properly fixed. What was the advice the guy gave Dave? That's easy. He told Dave to remove one nut from each of the other three wheels and use them to secure the new tire. Can you name one thing that all people on Earth are doing simultaneously? Getting older, duh! On a Monday morning, a big sum of money went missing from the accountant's safe. Three people were in the office at that time. Kate, the accountant, said she had left for several minutes to go to the bathroom. Walker, the IT manager, said he'd gone out for lunch and hadn't seen anything. Pete, a cleaning man, said he'd been cleaning the second floor at the time. Can you figure out who's lying? It's Walker. He said he'd been on his lunch break, but it was still morning at that time. In the afternoon, three people visited Tessa's clothing store. These three people were the only customers she had that day. The first person bought a belt and a purse. The second person bought a dress. And the third customer got a hat. One of them was a criminal, and Tessa immediately reported them to the police. Who is the criminal? And how did she know? The third person gave her a $1,000 bill, but such bills don't exist. 
On Halloween, Carrie decided to visit the spookiest house in the neighborhood. As soon as she got inside, the door locked behind her back. Luckily, she saw three ways out. However, behind the first door, there was a venomous snake. Behind the second door, there was toxic gas. And the third door was hiding a large lake. Which door should she choose? The last door. It's just a lake. She can swim across it. At Los Angeles Airport, the police were looking for a man that had smuggled some goods into the country. The only detail the police knew about the man was that he had a beard. They stopped a group of people that had just arrived from different countries. The detectives noticed three bearded men and interrogated them. Tom said he'd just arrived from London. It was a business trip. The second guy, Roberto, said he'd just come from Spain to visit his girlfriend. And the third man, Pierre, said he'd come from France. He was on vacation. The detectives didn't even need to check their plane tickets to figure out who the criminal was. And what do you think? It must be Pierre. Look, the guy doesn't have any luggage with him, but he said he'd come to LA on vacation. Noah reported to the police that someone had stolen his red motorbike the previous night. It disappeared right from his garage. The police started to search for it and tracked three main suspects. Take a look at them. Which one stole Noah's motorbike? It's this guy on the right. Look closely. His motorbike is painted. But under a layer of paint, you can spot some red color. He must have stolen it and painted it a different color. But you've caught him. Good job. Sandra went to the police station to report a crime. She said she was in the bathroom in the mall, reapplying her makeup when someone came up to her from behind and hit her on the head. The officer asked her if she remembered anything about the robber, but she said she hadn't seen anything since the criminal had approached her from behind. The police officer sent the woman home and refused to file the report. Why? The woman said she'd been fixing her makeup, so she had most likely been looking in the mirror. It means she would have seen the person approaching her from behind. She must be lying. Grace has seven sons, and each of them has a sister. How many children does Grace have in total? The answer is eight. If we consider that each son has the same sister, then it's seven sons plus one daughter, eight children in total. Anna runs a chocolate factory, and she offers all her clients a special deal. Anyone can exchange five chocolate wrappers for one chocolate bar. Robert spent two weeks collecting the wrappers and managed to find 77. Can you tell what maximum number of chocolates he can get from Anna? Robert can get a total of 19 chocolates. Here's how it works. First of all, he can exchange 77 wrappers for 15 chocolates with two wrappers left. Then, after unwrapping the new 15 chocolate bars, Robert will be able to exchange 15 wrappers for three more chocolates. Now he can use the remaining two wrappers plus the new three wrappers to get one more chocolate bar. 15 plus three plus one equals 19. Oliver was sitting at his desk, working from home, when someone hit him on the head. He was taken to the nearest hospital. Meanwhile, the police found four suspects that could have been responsible for the crime. All of them, Oliver's neighbors. Amelia said she'd been walking in the park all morning. Henry explained he'd been painting in the studio and had heard nothing. Jacob said he'd been repairing his car. 
Sophia answered she'd been taking a bath for the past three hours. Can you figure out who is lying? Well, take a look at these people's hands. Henry and Jacob were probably wearing gloves during their activities, which would explain why their hands are clean. But Sophia's hands are smooth, and they would be all wrinkled if she had indeed spent over three hours in the water. She must be the culprit. Hey, how about some tricky riddles that will put your brain to work? Ready? How fast can you solve this one? Grace has seven sons, and each of them has a sister. How many children does Grace have in total? The answer is eight. I bet all the sons have the same sister, so seven sons plus one sister equals eight children. Stephen's family was away this weekend, but he was found unconscious outside his mansion. Investigators had three main suspects. All of them were in the house when it happened. The first person was Maya, but she claimed to be innocent. I was cleaning the house in the morning and I took a nap in the afternoon, she told the investigators. John, the butler, said, I was told to check the food inventory in the afternoon. And the last person to be interrogated was James, the driver. He claimed he'd been far away from the house that day. Yeah, I was driving the boss's children to a garden party. Which of these people do you think is guilty? It was James. All family members were away that weekend, so his alibi can't be true. What English word has the same pronunciation even after you take away two of its three letters? It's B. Phew, that one took some work. Look at these images and try to guess what's wrong. Duh, in the last picture, the woman is trying to eat soup with a fork, like that would work. On a lazy Sunday afternoon, seven friends decided to go to the mall. Esme, Evelyn, and Elise grabbed a cup of coffee each while Ava, Ella, and Emma decided to drink some refreshing soda. Using this logic, can you figure out if Esther chose to drink coffee or soda? Esther is drinking coffee. The secret is in the girl's name. Esme, Evelyn, Elise, and Esther all have two letters E in their names, just like the word coffee. There were four pairs in the basket and four people in the room. Each person took one pair. In the end, there was still one pair left in the basket. How is that possible? The last person took a pair that was still lying in the basket. Mary's birthday was coming up and she decided to treat herself to a relaxing day at the spa. During a massage, Mary dozed off. When she woke up, the money she had in her purse was missing. Oh no! Mary had three suspects. The cashier, Erica, claimed, I was having lunch in the back. Catherine, the masseuse, said, I went to the back of the store to get some extra oil. The last person was Monica. She was another customer. She said she hadn't seen anything and had just been waiting for her appointment. Can you tell which one is the culprit? The thief is Catherine. She must have waited for Mary to fall asleep and then took her things. Look at the money hidden behind the oils. Hey, it's time for a hair appointment to trim those split ends. But in this scenario, there are only two hairdressers in town who can cut your hair. This guy or this girl. Which one should you choose? The girl, of course. If there are only two hairdressers in town, that means they cut each other's hair. And judging by the haircut the guy gave the girl, it looks like he doesn't really know what he's doing. 
If a rooster lays an egg on top of this cabin, in which direction will it roll? Aha! Roosters don't lay eggs, so it wouldn't roll anywhere. The shopkeeper of an expensive skincare store called the police because someone had robbed his business. He didn't notice the culprit, but according to the security camera footage, there were three customers in the store at the time of the robbery. Police officers questioned each of them. Michael said he'd been buying some stuff for his pets. The second suspect, Kayla, was looking for ointments and some aloe vera gel. The last person, Rachel, told the interrogators she'd been busy looking for lotions. Can you tell who's lying? Michael is the culprit. The skincare store doesn't sell pet products. Duh. Peter is a rich man who owns a lot of expensive jewelry. One day, he woke up and noticed that all of it had been stolen. Uh -oh. He called a private detective to solve this case. Peter's wife Carla was the first one to be interrogated. I was showering at the time, she said nervously. Bianca, the housekeeper who had been working for the family for years, was not in the house. She said, I was cleaning the garage. The last suspect was Barb, the house chef. I was making lunch for the family, she told the detective. Can you tell who stole the jewelry? It was Barb, of course. She claimed she was cooking lunch, but the crime happened at night. A man lives on the 80th floor of a high-rise building. On rainy days, he takes the elevator all the way up. But on sunny days, he only takes the elevator halfway to his floor. And then, he takes the stairs the rest of the way. Why does he do this? Well, my friends, it so happens that the man is short. Normally, he can only reach the 40th floor button. But on rainy days, he manages to push the 80th floor button with the help of his umbrella handle. Genius, huh? On a rainy day, Miranda decided to work from home. At one point, she went to the bathroom. But when she got back, she noticed that her cell phone and no. money had been stolen right in her own house during the day. There were three people in the house at the time. Her sister Beth claimed it wasn't her. I was still asleep at the time because I'd gone to bed late yesterday. Her other sister, Anna, said she'd been taking a stroll in the garden when it had happened. I was watching the night-scented orchid bloom. And lastly, there was Josh, Miranda's boyfriend. I've just got home for lunch, he said. What do you think? Which of these three suspects stole Miranda's money and cell phone? Anna is the culprit, of course. Night-scented orchids only bloom at night, so she probably sneaked in and grabbed Miranda's things while the girl was away. A farmer rode into the village on Monday. He stayed in the village for four days and rode out on Monday. How is that possible? The farmer's horse is named Monday. I bet you didn't guess this one, did you? Uncle Ben's farm experienced a terrible downpour and all but 15 pigs were missing and couldn't be found. How many pigs are still in the barn? If you said 15, you got it right! So, there are three important rooms in a house. The first one is a library full of rare books. The second room stores piles of money and gold. And the third room has boxes full of expensive jewelry in it. In case of a fire emergency, in which room will the police try to extinguish the fire first? The correct answer is none. Police officers don't fight fire. That's the job of firefighters. Virginia accidentally sent an email to her boyfriend instead of her best friend. She didn't want her partner to see it, so she took his laptop while he was sleeping and tried to delete the message. 
The laptop required a password to unlock. Hmm. Luckily, there was a post-it with a hint. History, three. Music, five. Book, two, three, one. Yellow, one. What's the passcode? Each number indicated the letter Virginia had to select in the corresponding word. The third letter in history is S. The fifth letter in music is C. The second, third, and first letters in book are O, O, and B. And the first letter in yellow is Y. The password is Scooby. That's all for today, folks. Yay! Hope your brain is good and functioning after all these sharp riddles. See you next time. Austin throws a party at his parents' house. The next morning, he finds out that someone had robbed him. The thief took all the money and jewelry from the safe locker. Austin video calls four of his best friends and says, Someone robbed my house yesterday. Do you have any suspects? Mary says, I'm sorry, but I can't believe it was one of the guests. Julie says, I spent all evening downstairs. I didn't even come close to your parents' safe. So I didn't notice anything suspicious. Bob says, no way! Every single guest at the party is pretty wealthy. Maybe it's the pizza guy. And Rick replies, But Mary showed up with a stranger looking like a criminal. I wouldn't be surprised to find out that he's the thief. Can you guess who's the robber? Julie. Austin didn't mention the safe. How did she know? This pen is only half filled with ink. How many words can it write? Pens cannot write even a single word. It's the person holding the pen who can write the words. One of these customers is not from Earth. Can you spot who? This guy is eating toothpicks. What about this company? Who's not from Earth? This person, who uses a laptop as a mug holder? Bobby, Stella, and Chris are having a roller skating contest in the park, but one of them is cheating. Can you guess who? Chris. Take a closer look at his feet. His roller skates are not so simple. Wendy is selling flowers. One sunflower costs $24. The price of one narcissist is $9. Can you calculate the price of one calla lily? The price for one calla lily would be $1.50. Each flower costs $1.50 per petal, and a calla lily only has one petal. George and Nancy are having dinner in a fancy restaurant. Can you spot three weird things here? The violinist is using an arrow. There's a toad in these flowers, and this waiter serves a bitten apple. Emma, Ted, and Peter are having a speed swimming competition. Can you spot who's cheating? It's Ted. Take a look at his neck. He has a small chip. Therefore, he must be a robot, and he can't compete with humans. Andy and his wife Nancy go to sleep early tonight. In the middle of the night, weird noises from the basement wake Andy up. His wife is gone. Andy looks around the house, but Nancy doesn't answer. Andy goes down to the basement. Suddenly, a creepy clown pops out of nowhere and tries to grab Andy. But Andy just laughs and says, Stop fooling around. I know it's just a prank. How did he know? Take a look at the picture on the wall. Nancy and the clown are wearing identical sneakers. Bob visits this coffee shop every day because he's secretly in love with the local barista, Kelly. But today, he faced unpleasant news. 
someone had replaced Kelly with her evil clone. How did Bob know? All Kelly's piercings and tattoos are gone, and no marks are left on the skin. Billy downloads a dating app to find his love. He finds three ladies and likes them equally. Elle is a travel blogger, vegan, and a huge fan of rom-coms. Ashley is a school teacher. She loves hiking and writes her own novels. Bella is a scientist. She's very busy at work. That's why she never has had a serious relationship. She's fond of ice cream and sunrises. Unfortunately, only one of these three profiles isn't fake. Can you help Billy ask the right lady out? There's a wedding picture on Bella's desk. Therefore, she's a liar. Al says that she's a vegan, but she's eating a hot dog in this picture and a steak in this picture. So she's a liar too. So Billy should invite Ashley. Shelly runs an online shop. Although all her employees live in the same city, they only meet online. This morning, their Zoom call was interrupted by a stranger. Can you spot the imposter? It's this lady. All employees live in the same city, which means in the same time zone. But take a look out her window. It's a deep night. Dan is hiking in the woods during the last weekend of March every year, but this time he gets lost. Dan wanders around and finds this sign. He should choose one of the three routes to get out of the forest. The first route leads through a village of mutants. They hate people and no one has ever managed to escape from them. The second route is across a very old suspension bridge located under a river full of toads and worms. The third route leads through the habitat of a large family of bears. Which way is more or less safe? It's spring now, so the bears are awake and probably very hungry. Also, it will be difficult for Dan to deal with the mutants all alone, so Dan should take the second route. Even if he falls into the river, nothing bad will happen. Toads and worms don't bite. Rosie is baking a delicious chocolate cake in the kitchen. It's a gift for her boyfriend. When it's ready, she puts the cake in the fridge and goes upstairs to take a shower. In a while, Rosie returns to find out that someone had cut the cake and eaten a few pieces. Rosie questions three of her roommates. Samantha says, How dare you? I'm on a sugar-free diet. Pam says, I haven't been in the kitchen today. I'm too busy with my studies. And Harry says, I opened the fridge two minutes ago and the cake was full. Who ate the missing pieces? Nobody. The roommates pranked Rosie. The spoiled chocolate cake isn't Rosie's cake. Take a closer look. It has a different decoration. And her cake is still in the fridge, in this box on another shelf. Tom is having a job interview. The HR manager likes his resume and asks him one final question to check his logical thinking. These toothpicks indicate a group of fishes moving from west to east. Can you make them move in the opposite direction by moving just three toothpicks? Here's the solution. Victor is riding a bicycle in the park. Suddenly, someone throws a spray can of blue paint at his head. Victor loses balance and falls. He finds three suspects and interrogates them. Alex says, I was just sitting on the bench and reading a book. Barbie says, I was skating and didn't see any paint cans. And Ashley says, I was painting graffiti, but soon I noticed that someone had stolen my blue paint. Who threw the paint at Victor? Ashley has paint on her hands, and that's okay because she's making street art. Alex has stains on his t-shirt, but it's just a design. And why would Barbie have blue stains on her hands if she didn't see any paint? Anna is waiting for her boyfriend, Stan, in a restaurant. 
he shows up with a box of donuts and goes straight to Anna. Suddenly, he slips on the wet floor. What is Stan trying to say? The donuts say, marry me? Stan is proposing to Anna. Fred sits down at a barber shop. The hairdresser says, you must be a visitor here. I love to cut strangers. It's better to serve two strangers than one local. Fred asks why. Can you guess the hairdresser's reply? Serving two is always more profitable than one. I have hundreds of legs, but I can only lean. Make me feel dirty so you feel clean. What am I? I'm a broom. The CIA arrives at Chris's house this morning. They suspect that he's a criminal. He sells stolen art to other criminals via Instagram, but Chris denies everything. Having searched the apartment, the agents find his phone. There are three suspicious people among his followers. Can you spot the criminal? It's this guy. His nickname literally says, Top Secret. Rose, Lily, and Jasmine enter a flower shop on Mother's Day to buy some flowers for their moms. One of them buys Lily's, the second one, Rose's, and the third one, Jasmine's. It's funny, said the lady with Rose's. <laughs> we bought Rose's, Jasmine's, and Lily's, but none of us bought the flowers matching her name. <laughs> Lily replies, whoa, you're right. Can you guess which kind of flowers each of the girls bought? We know that the lady who bought the roses isn't Rose, and she's not Lily either, because Lily replied to her words. So Jasmine bought roses, Rose bought Lily's, and Lily bought Jasmine's. Bob also bought some flowers for his wife. All of the flowers he has are orchids, except two. All of the flowers he has are hibiscuses, except two. And all of the flowers he has are roses, except two. Can you guess how many flowers Bob has? Bob purchased only two flowers, neither of which are orchids, hibiscuses, or roses. At the end of his shift, the barista checks a tip jar. There are five coins inside the jar. Five people take these five coins home. However, one coin is still left in the jar. How can this be possible? Simple, the last person took the jar along with the coin. Therefore, one coin still remains in the jar. Three best friends participate in a bicycle race, but one of them is cheating. Can you guess who? The person in the middle. She rides an electric bike. Four people wake up on a deserted island. In a while, they get really hungry and go for a walk to find some food. Amy finds a bush with berries. Peter finds a closed can of beans. Fred finds this beautiful apple tree. And Nina discovers a hive full of honey. Only one of these options is safe. Can you decide which one? A creepy cobra is hiding in the bush. The beans expired 10 years ago. Oh. It's not safe to take honey from the hive without a protective suit. So. Apples are the safest option. It has 13 hearts, yet it's never alive. What is it? A pack of cards. I have three eyes and all are in a straight line. When my red eye opens, everything freezes. What am I? I'm a stoplight. I'm made of wood, but you can't saw me down. What am I? I'm sawdust. Wendy is trapped in a creepy castle. It has only two possible exits. 
The first door leads to a room constructed from magnifying glass. The blazing hot sun instantly fries anyone who enters, and there's a fire-breathing dragon waiting behind the second door. Can you help Wendy escape? She should wait until nighttime and go through the first door. Can you write the number 45 only using the number 4? Here's the correct way. Tim lives in an apartment building. He comes home in the evening and finds out that his car is wrecked. He also sees three neighbors standing nearby. Tim wants to find out who's guilty, so he questions them. Henry replies, I was just skating around the block. I didn't touch your car. Hmm. Will says, I was playing basketball with my friends. And Shelly replies, I've spent all day working in the coffee shop on the first floor of our building. Can you spot the liar? Hmm. Shelly, she said that she'd been visiting the coffee shop, but it's closed for good. Bella wants to rob an old lady's house. She approaches the door and sees that the door is opened. <laughs> Bella freaks out and runs away. Can you see what's wrong here? There's no hole for a key. There's a five-letter word that has three consonants, and they are all the same. Also, the word has two different vowels. There's something wrong associated with this word. Can you guess it? Error. Sam is a restaurant owner. He enters the space, and the waiter whispers to him, Sir, there's a famous millionaire eating lunch at one of the tables. Ooh. Sam looks around and sees these four persons. Can you guess who's rich? The first guy is wearing a fake Nike hoodie. This elegant woman has a fake Gucci bag. The third person is wearing torn shoes, and this lady is holding the keys from the brand new Ferrari parked behind the window. So she's definitely not poor. Take a look at these nine letters. Can you form a nine letter word using these letters? Don't forget to use each letter. The word is mythology. What has lots of eyes but can't see? The correct answer is a potato. I'm the part of the bird that's not in the sky. I can swim in the ocean and yet remain dry. What am I? I'm a shadow. An electric train is traveling southwest at 95 miles per hour, and the wind is blowing northeast at 95 miles per hour. Can you guess which direction the smoke blows? There's no smoke with an electric train. What five-letter word becomes shorter when you add two letters to it? The correct answer is short. The more of me here, the less you see. What am I? I'm darkness. What building has the most stories? Library, of course. Bob gets lost in the gym. He's wandering around and finds three doors leading outside. There are dangerous lions behind the first door. There's a giant pterodactyl breathing fire behind the second door. And behind the third door, there's a tank with hungry sharks. Nobody can cross this tank and stay alive. Which door should Bob choose to survive? To 
crack this riddle, Bob should remember that pterodactyls don't breathe fire. That's what dragons do. Also, pterodactyls went extinct many millions of years ago, so Bob should choose the second door. I'm tall when I'm young, and I'm short when I'm old. What am I? I'm a candle. There's a one-story house in which everything is pink. Pink walls, pink doors, pink furniture. Can you guess the color of the stairs? It's a one-story house. There are no stairs. I'm taken from a mine and shut up in a wooden case from which I'm never released. And yet I'm used by almost everybody. What am I? I'm a pencil lead. Miss Smith is a billionaire. She has three people living in her house with her. Adam, her reckless son, Peter, her noisy brother, Hello. and Sebastian, the loyal housekeeper. One day, Miss Smith finds this message written on her calendar. Can you help her spot the betrayer? Ooh. The circled numbers mean the months. It's her son, Adam. I can be long or I can be short. I can be grown and I can be bought. I can be painted or left bare. I can be round or a square. What am I? I'm your fingernails. Danny is a famous vampire hunter. He gets an invitation to a small town. There's a vampire living in this town, but nobody can catch this dangerous creature. Danny decides to look in the local restaurant. He asks the staff to show him security camera archives to check among the restaurant visitors over the years and soon identifies the vampire. Who's the vampire? There he is. Vampires don't age and also don't eat food. Danny takes a walk around the town and spots another creepy detail. Can you see it too? There's a zombie hiding over there. What about this location? Can you spot any zombies here? Hello, great job. Can you count the number of triangles in the given picture? What about this picture? How many triangles can you see? You can pause this video if you need extra time. There are 104 triangles in this picture. Larry is a college professor. He gives his worst student, Mike, a task to write an essay within a week. Seven days later, Mike sends Larry a message begging him to postpone the deadline for three days. Larry agrees. Three days later, Larry claims the essay, but now Mike asks for a five-day delay. Larry is very kind, so this time he agrees too. Five days later, Mike shows Larry a burning candle and says, Sir, can you please postpone the deadline till this candle wick burns out? Larry laughs and agrees. Mike laughs too, because now he can forget about submitting the essay. Why? Mike blew out the candle. He said, till this candle wick burns out, not till this flame burns out. So now, Mike can keep his candle unburned forever and never submit his essay. Larry brings three boxes of cupcakes to the college kitchen. He leaves them on the table to celebrate his birthday with co-workers after classes. All boxes have different sizes, but each contains three cupcakes. Mm. Meanwhile, Mike enters the kitchen. He opens one box and eats three cupcakes. 
After classes, Larry finds out that every box in the kitchen still has three cupcakes. Oh. How is that possible? Mike ate cupcakes from the largest box, and then he put a smaller box into the empty box. So when Larry opened the remaining two boxes, each of them still had three cupcakes. After classes, Mike invites Wendy on a date. Hello. Since they're both broke, they decided to take a bus ride and then walk back. The bus speed is 9 miles per hour, and the guy's walking speed is 3 miles per hour. What's the maximum distance they could ride on the bus if they must come back in 8 hours? Mike and Wendy can move on a bus three times as fast as they can walk. Therefore, they should spend three quarters of their time walking and only one quarter on a bus ride. So to fit into the eight hour limit, they should ride for two hours going 18 miles and then walk back in six hours. Mike and Wendy are walking down the street and notice one very curious thing. It has three eyes and all are in a straight line. When its red eye opens, everything freezes. Can you guess what they see? A stoplight! Mike returns to the student dormitory to find out his entire food supply is gone. He questioned three people. Can you guess who ate his food? The guy on the right. He has crumbs on his mustache. Mike goes to the library to study archival newspapers. This newspaper is supposed to have 60 pages, but pages 24 and 41 are missing. Can you guess which other pages won't be there too? Pages 19, 20, 23, 37, 38, and 42 will also be missing. Mike finds a note inside the newspaper. There's a secret maze in the library, leading to amazing treasures. The note shows this map. Can you help Mike walk this path correctly? Here's the right way. Mike walks through the maze and finds this bookcase. One of the shelves is fake. Can you spot which one? This shelf is fake. Books on the other shelves are covered with dust and cobwebs. But these books are clean and the cobwebs around them are torn. Mike finds a secret room behind the fake bookshelf. He enters the room and finds a big safe and this weird note nearby. The safe is locked and Mike needs to enter a 9-letter password to open it. Can you help him crack the code? The correct password is Moonlight, and here's why. Take a look at the hint note. All Mike needs to do is to use the corresponding number letter of each word. The first letter in the maze is M. The third letter in looks is O. And the second letter in roses is also O. And so on. Mike opens the safe and finds three identical gemstones and a note. Oh. Suddenly, the door to the secret room slams shut and the walls begin to shrink. Mike reads the note. Only one of these diamonds is real. Find it and put it into the lock. You only have 15 seconds. Good luck. Oh, no. Can you help Mike spot the fake diamonds? Mike should drop all three stones into this glass of water on the table. If the diamond is real, it will drop to the bottom of the glass thanks to its high density. And if it's a fake, it will float on the surface. Mike succeeds and unlocks the door leading to a secret hallway. Yeah. He walks through the hallway and sees four doors and a beautiful statue in the middle of the space. The statue sings, We came out at night without being called. 
We disappeared by morning without being stolen. Who are we? Can you guess which door Mike should enter? The song has a hint for Mike. The statue is singing about stars. Therefore, Mike should choose the door decorated with stars. Mike enters the next room and meets a queen. She says, Hello, stranger. I have a task for you. If you succeed, I'm going to reward you with wealth and fame. But if you fail, you'll stay here forever as my prisoner. I want to renovate my kingdom so that all my ten castles are connected through five straight walls. And each wall must connect four castles together. Also, at least one of the castles should be protected with walls. Then, the queen shows him this picture and continues, My royal architect failed to give any solution that meets all my wishes, but he suggested this plan. Do you have a better idea? Mike should offer this solution to please the queen. Now two castles are protected with walls. The queen kept her word and made Mike very rich. Also, she threw a feast in his honor. Unfortunately, not all royal servants are glad to see their queen with a new favorite. Take a look at these three people. Can you spot Mike's hater? Although this friendly-looking lord gives Mike a bag of gold coins, there's a snake hiding inside his gift. Mike is observing the royal garden. He sees three lemon trees. Each of them has exactly ten lemons. The gardener comes over and picks four oranges from each tree. Can you calculate the number of fruits left on the lemon trees? Thirty. Oranges don't grow on lemon trees. The queen tells Mike an amazing story. I'm fond of dragon racing. On Sunday, I rode to see a race in a cozy village outside of my kingdom. Five days later, on Monday, I went home. Can you explain this, considering that she doesn't have a time machine? Sunday is the name of her dragon. Mike likes the kingdom very much, but it's time to go home. The queen gives him 3,000 gemstones the size of a watermelon. He rents a truck to carry them home. Mike's current location is 1,000 miles away from home. Unfortunately, the truck can only carry 1,000 gemstones at once. Also, there's a check post on every mile till home. Each post requires all drivers to pay with one gemstone while traveling towards Mike's hometown. But the road is free of charge while traveling towards the kingdom. Can you figure out a way to bring the highest possible number of gems to Mike's hometown? Mike should make three trips of 1,000 gemstones each till mile 333. After that, he will be left with 2,001 gemstones and have 667 more miles to go. At this point, he should take two trips of 1,000 gemstones, covering 500 miles more. This way, he will be left with 1,000 gemstones. After riding the remaining 167 miles, Mike will be left with 833 gems. And he'll still be rich and fabulous!